been a busy morning. And again, appreciate your patience and being here. We have a number of speakers uh, this afternoon. We'll start with uh, Sergeant Kevin Allen, who will give a brief synopsis of what we've seen uh, since around 6 o'clock this morning. Following the sergeant will be Mayor Ted Wheeler, then our Police Chief Bob Day, District Attorney Mike Schmidt, and then Portland State University President Ann Cub. Sergeant. All right, thanks. Uh, I'm going to be giving a summary. Uh, it is not a comprehensive summary because, uh, as many of you know, our officers are still out, out there and we're still getting information filtering through our command post. Um, so I'm going to give you the information that I know at this point, and then uh, we will be uh, releasing more as we confirm it. Uh, but we do know that um, this morning uh, we had a planned uh, operation to uh, go to the Portland State Library and uh, begin a clearing operation. Uh, we uh, started that operation about 6 o'clock in the morning where we entered the building. Um, the strategy was to start at the top of the building and work our way down. So officers uh, entered the building and uh, went in an elevator to the top of the building secured the roof, secured the top floors, and then slowly, carefully, deliberately uh, working their way down, clearing the building as they went. Um, as we expected, we encountered a, uh, a lot of barricades, uh, a lot of uh, things put in our way to try to slow us down, um, and uh, that is that, that did cause it to take a couple of hours for us to get through the building. Um, the, the biggest challenge, the, most of the barricades were on the first floor. Um, a short time ago, we released a video of officers breaching the door to the first floor. Um, that was definitely the most difficult for them to get through, um, but uh, they effectively got through it, and um, when we approached the bottom floor, uh, a, a group of people who were in the, uh, in the library fled out the front door. Um, the, uh, when the uh, officers uh, got down to the first floor, they uh, did make some arrests. Um, we know of three minor injuries, uh, actually two minor injuries to officers. Um, they did not have to be evaluated or anything. There were uh, small injuries. One officer was uh, sprayed with a fire extinguisher. Uh, the person who sprayed the officer with the fire extinguisher was arrested. Um, most of the folks who uh, ran out of the building uh, were seen circling back around uh, and they became focused on the exterior perimeter officers who were uh, trying to secure the outside of the building. Uh, many of you have video of some of that where uh, there was some confrontation, there were some uses of force. Um, we ha I know one instance where an arrest was made uh, right in front of some of the cameras. Um, what we know about that arrest was that the suspect uh, had a hard shield uh, and was striking at an officer uh, with that shield, and that's why that arrest took place. Um, all told, we had 12 arrests that we know of, um, and of those 12, four uh, are believed to be Portland State University students. The rest are not believed to be affiliated directly with the university. The, um, the challenge on the outside came to pass when uh, uh, some of the members of the crowd realized that we had a custody van where we had people who were arrested in the van. Uh, they tried to blockade the van to keep it from leaving. Uh, so we had to bring in uh, officers, not only from the Portland Police Bureau, but uh, we had the Oregon State Police there as well. and their, um, MRT team that helped us um, get those vehicles uh, out. Uh, that was that took some time, uh, but we were able to su successfully do that. Once we did that, we uh, brought our teams back to just the outer outside of the perimeter of the library, and um, the goal now is to get it secured. Um, and uh, Portland State University is working on that process as we speak. Uh, so it is still an active scene, obviously. So. Um, there may be more information coming down. Um, I want to emphasize too that there were people that were that left and ran off 
Um, but that does not necessarily mean that they won't be held accountable uh, as much as we can do with the criminal justice system. Um, we are uh, actively investigating crimes that were committed and future arrests are possible. And of course, we'll share those with you at a time that is appropriate. Um, one other note, um, on the first floor we did find some interesting items. We've um, put out some photographs and some video of some of those items. Uh, they include what appear to be some kind of improvised weapons with uh, their, these hollow bamboo sticks um, and a bucket full of ball bearings. Um, we're not sure exactly what they were planning to use those for, but those were all staged up. Uh, there were uh, paint balloons. There were spray bottles full of ink um, and a note on there that said they were supposed to be deployed at officers. Uh, there were also little cups of paint. Um, there was paint on the floor uh, and like a soap or a slick substance that um, uh, made footing difficult. We think that was put there to try to make it uh, slick for officers so they might slip and fall. Um, there are also some uh, tools and uh, uh, other things that we're not quite sure what they were intended to be used for. Uh, so that is all I know so far. I'm going to introduce the, uh, our other speakers now and then uh, we'll be available for a few questions after that. Um, so I'll introduce Mayor Ted Wheeler. Thank you, and I'll, I'll just speak briefly. I'm speaking in my capacity as police commissioner today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank law enforcement for their quick and decisive action this morning, as well as uh, the planning that went into this over the course of a couple of days. They were able, as you heard, to clear the library through an operation that was both safe and effective. I also want to thank our partners. There were many partners who were involved in this. I particularly want to give a shout out to the mobile response teams from the Oregon State Police. It was critically important that we had that support, and I want to thank them for joining the Portland Police Bureau in this morning's operation. A couple of nights ago, uh, very late at night as it turns out, we stood before you and said that we pledged to cooperate, the Portland Police Bureau, our law enforcement partners, the district attorney, and of course, Portland State University. And I want to report back to you this afternoon that that partnership remained strong, the communication remained frequent, and the collaboration, I think, helped make this a successful operation up to this point. I also want to stress that nobody is declaring victory. This is a fluid situation. As you just heard, uh, there are still law enforcement uh, folks who are deployed, there is still an active situation, and we're viewing this uh, as a fluid uh, type of circumstance. Uh, last but not least, I also want to thank the local business community. We've been coordinating with businesses, particularly the downtown business community, on uh, what could potentially be the impact of uh, the march that we saw last night. Uh, unfortunately, there were a few businesses that were vandalized. I'm very pleased that we were able to send in bureau leadership as well as members of my own staff to meet with those business owners and operators, and they're already recovering from the circumstances of last night. Uh, finally, I just want to say this about that. I, for the life of me, do not understand how terrorizing local business operators can possibly impact events in the Middle East. If you believe that by damaging a business, which frankly harms the frontline employees who work in those businesses, we've had reports that they were frightened, that they were traumatized. If you believe damaging those businesses or trashing a library on a university campus will impact events in the Middle East, then you are delusional. What we need to do is come together as a community protest peacefully for those who choose to protest and not engage in these rampant acts of criminal destruction and violence. Criminal destruction and violence is not protest. It is criminal activity, plainly and simply. And we're here today to tell you that we will hold those accountable to the fullest extent of the law to the degree that we can. Thank you. And next, I'll introduce uh, Chief uh, Bob Day. Bob has only been the permanent chief 
for a matter of days. Uh, I had a great deal of respect for him previously. Now I have even more. Chief Day. Thank you. I just want to echo the, one of the mayor's comments, probably a few of them, but in particular that this isn't a victory lap. In fact, I see events like this as with a great deal of sadness. And the reason is, is because the criminal behavior that we've outlined and we've seen demonstrated really co-ops the true message and the significance of maybe what is trying to be accomplished. We all have deeply held beliefs, whether that be about conditions around the world or right here in the city of Portland. And when we see the activity that we've seen over the last few days, or even going back to 2020, uh, we lose the opportunity to bring about real change. And I know that Portlanders at their core want to be about real change, and this isn't the way to go about it. So we're going to continue to be very intentional in our efforts to address criminal behavior and support First Amendment rights. I also want to thank the Mayor and D.A. Schmidt and President Cudd for this unified response that not only we demonstrated here Monday evening, late at night, on a moment's notice, but all throughout the week. I think this is unique for us as a, as a city, but really unique for us as a country. I'm not seeing this anywhere else where the university leaderships, the police, the, uh, the mayor, and the district attorney are coming together and saying, yes, we, we want a different story, we want a different narrative. This represents in a small way what Portland is and what Portland can be. And I would encourage our other elected leaders, our other university presidents, state leaders, as well as federal leaders to step into this space and support this work. I'm appreciative of Governor Kotek's um, recent comments as well as her assistance in providing the state police. We've not only had state police support, we've had great regional partner support. We've been able to uh, rely on our partners from Gresham, from Milwaukee, from Multnomah County, uh, Beaverton, Lake Oswego, etc., helping provide uh, safety and security while we've been addressing these issues primarily uh, downtown. Certainly is not lost on me the events last night uh, with the protest and the damage that was done that the mayor highlighted. We also had a number of police vehicles set on fire out at the training division at this event today. I've been asked several times if I see these as related or connected. Right now we're looking at them as individual events. They're all individual events and we are in the process of investigating them fully and thoroughly with the, proper, with the appropriate resources. I'm not naive to the fact that there may be connected, there may be some crossover, and we will certainly make sure that our investigators are in communication with one another as we look to make arrests and prosecute. But in regards to the training division and the loss of those police cars, which is substantial, our, our new officers use those to train in, um, they're, they're a vital part of our training unit. Something positive and encouraging was it didn't take but just a few minutes this morning for that news to spread and we heard from the State Academy and many of our neighboring agencies saying, hey, what do you need? We can offer police cars for your training. So it's not going to set us back and as you know, we've been doing a lot of hiring and a lot of training and so uh, the ability to have that support and not be able to have to miss a beat so that we can continue is really important. Just overall, I want to commend and thank the men and women of the Portland Police Bureau, the State Police and those other agencies I mentioned. This is a tough job. And uh, these events can be very taxing. People have worked a lot of hours under a tremendous amount of pressure and scrutiny. And uh, to this extent, and what we've seen so far, I've been very proud and very pleased with the work we're seeing. We've got more work to do today. We're going to have more work to do tomorrow. That's just the nature of what, what we do. But I couldn't be more proud to represent the Police Bureau and continue to promote this beautiful city that I know we all love and care about. And I'd like to turn it over to District Attorney Mike Schmidt. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as Oregonians, as Portlanders, uh, we value the rights for our voices to be heard, as you've heard from everyone up here. Uh, and I'll always work to protect that right. Uh, and we will always work to protect that right. But unfortunately, what we've seen is that some people have resorted to destructive behavior, which is not acceptable and will not be tolerated. Things like spraying graffiti, breaking windows, and setting fires. I condemn these criminal acts. My office is working closely with the Portland Police Bureau in this situation and other agencies. Uh, I appreciate the collaboration. They have my full support in their response. I want to again be very clear. We will prosecute these cases. We'll use every tool at our disposal to make sure that people are held accountable. I have a prosecutor embedded in the investigation and we will make charging decisions as appropriate uh, once the evidence is collected and reviewed. 
My office is happy to provide updates uh, as charges are issued and that information becomes available. I want to thank our community members who have engaged in demonstrations peacefully and civilly. We want people to be able to safely demonstrate. And when others engage in criminal behavior, it's unproductive and makes it less safe for everybody else's voices to be heard. With that, I'll turn it over to uh, President Cutt. Good afternoon. Um, so it was our hope that we could resume our educational mission and hold classes today. But with the escalation of protest and violence on our campus last night, including protesters threatening to take over additional buildings, that really became un untenable. So we made the decision to close the campus and lock down our buildings. Um, the Portland Police Bureau has done an amazing job, and I'm so grateful. They've cleared Mil Millar Library. I'm so grateful for their assistance and the care they showed as they carried out that difficult task. Um, we asked for their presence and their assistance only after extensive negotiations using faculty members as intermediaries. We gave students in the library the opportunity to leave without the threat of expulsion or suspension and no transcript notation, no changes to their current status uh, in student housing, and no changes to their scholarship status or financial aid, as well as no um, impact on their educational visa status. I even offered to engage with them directly in dialogue about their other demands. The students who remained in the building chose not to take that option. We also made it clear to all faculty, staff, and students that remaining in the library that that was trespassing. Um, they had plenty of opportunity to leave prior to the police arriving, and they chose not to stay. Our primary concern is for the physical and emotional well-being of our students. This was a traumatic event for everyone in our campus community. Um, both those inside the library and then those watching from outside. Throughout this process and even after the events uh, of the day, I'm still open to meeting with our students to hear their concerns, but this pro protest is obviously bigger than Portland State University at this point. PSU is an access institution. We have more than 21,000 students. It is incumbent on us to serve all of our students. Of course, we support the free speech rights of our students who feel so passionate about the horrors of war and the killings of innocents in Gaza. But we must take care of all of our students and provide a safe learning environment. It is tragic that some of our students, along with others from outside, have so badly damaged our library and taken away that essential learning space. You know, as a philosophy professor and the daughter of librarians, that space is really a sacred space to me, and I am really um, so saddened to see um, what has happened to it. So we appreciate very much the assistance of the Portland Police Bureau and the Oregon State Police and the restraint with which they have addressed this situation. So grateful to Mayor Wheeler, to Chief Bob Day, the DA, Mike Schmidt, um, it's been, um, I won't say a pleasure to get to know them and work with them so closely, but it has been a, a truly um, wonderful professional experience for me to see how they work and to, to learn about the ways in which they care for our community with, um, with such be deep affection and commitment. So I also want to thank Governor Tina Kotek who um, lent her assistance and was also in communication with me throughout. I've been reassured by many people that staying the course the way we have um, is the right thing to do, and I, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that support. As a philosophy professor, it's not my first, um, it, it is my first rodeo as far as this goes, but uh, it, it's not the first thing that I've ever learned how to do. So thank you for this, um, and I'm here to also answer questions. As I'm sure all of you can appreciate, it's been a long day for all of the individuals up here. They have a lot of work to do in the coming hours, but we do want to allow some time for some Q&A. With that said, I just ask that you identify who you are and identify the 
uh, leader that you would like to ask a question to. Thank you. <coughs> for President Cudd, for the students who have been arrested, are there any suspensions or any other disciplinary actions you'll take? <coughs> Well, we have a student conduct process, and we will uh, follow that through. Um, they'll have, you know, due process in, in, throughout our our process. Um, but, you know, these were very serious events, and, and there will be consequences. Is your offer still on the table for that? No. My question is for Chief Day, Emily Gershwin, Chief News here. Of the, of the protesters that ran outside of the building this morning, what actually happened there were any of them arrested yeah i believe so the some were arrested kevin yes. was, i mean i know that yes some were arrested the how many of that i do not know i also know that we're actively distributing information with pictures and photos of those that were not arrested but were seeking to take into custody but there were some arrests made yes did officers chase those protesters and about how many ran out of the building i do not know about the pursuit or lack of and in terms of numbers, I've heard numbers near 50, uh, but certainly, you know, we're going to have to review the video to see. And you're in pursuit to make arrests? Uh, we're continuing. Arrests. We're continuing follow-up investigations with all of these. So yes, we have we have information. We are looking actively looking for people who were not arrested, but you know, we have probable cause for based and upon. The why only 12 report. arrests? Well, I'm not sure the whole extent of the availability and the you know, the tactics that were used at the time. So it's all part of what we will evaluate as we go forward. And, and one more, we know that only four arrests were PSU students. What were the other people doing there? And have you identified them? Like, were they from Portland? What were they doing in the library? Those are follow-up questions we'll have to ask Mike or Sergeant Allen in terms of those details as they get processed. I want to add something to the <coughs> question. We do have a number of images of people who left the library. I've spoken to detectives in major crimes and we'll be pushing out images of these individuals later today. We are pursuing them. About how many are you pursuing? We don't have an exact number. Okay. This again is a very fluid Ball situation. Park, like dozens more? Potentially. Okay. I have a question maybe for Sergeant Allen, Drew Reeves with KPTV. Uh, you mentioned four arrests for students, a lot of them were not. Do you know the group that was left in the library this morning? Was it a majority not students, you believe, or do you have any ideas? Well, we only have the information on the people that we arrested. Um, and so the, obviously there are some people in there that we may not necessarily have their identification. So uh, it is too early to answer that question reliably, uh, but we did know that there was some uh, discussion about that this entire group was made up of PSU students, um, and we found that to be not the case. My question is for President Cud. Um, I'm Julia Silverman from the Oregonian. Um, what more can you tell us about damages to the library at this point? To books, to rare books, to electronics? Is there a financial estimate? And do you know how long the library will remain closed? Um, we don't have very much information right now. We've, uh, I've actually been watching news coverage to see what the, it looks like inside the building. We, we had. We've, we've had very little look inside, so it's hard to say. Um, but the damage does seem to be very extensive on a couple of the floors where they were really barricaded against, um, against the police. Um, so, you know, and I've also seen um, images of graffiti on the walls. Um, some of those walls are going to be hard to, to paint and, and, and to correct that. So um, it, it will take a while. Um, I've also heard reports, uh, both from an officer and uh, one, of, one of our CPSO officers, as well as from the news media, that there were some thefts of some um, very, um, you know, some rare uh, archival material that um, we uh, will be very sad if we lost that. President, can oh, you sorry. Let's give someone else an opportunity. Sorry, I just have one more. I just um, have yeah. a follow-up when you're done. Um, I just wanted to say, I hadn't heard before, I don't think it had been previously reported that there were um, concerns last night that there may be occupations of other buildings on campus. Can you elaborate at all on that? Um, not really other than to say um, at other universities we've seen that happen. We've seen you clear one and then other places spring up. So we actually, you know, have thought about that potential contingency for a while. 
But uh, last night, um, because there were more people coming or coming to campus, um, that seemed like it could be a, a real possibility. Actually, um, the other night, uh, there was one instance where, and this was the night that I was negotiating with students, so it's, that must have been Tuesday night. It's hard for me to keep track, but Tuesday night. Um, that's when the tenor really changed, and uh, there was an incident where in one of our other buildings across the park blocks from the library, um, some clearly students who were in that building legitimately, I mean, they are students, it was, the campus was closed, but somewhat legitimately they were in that building. They barred the doors from other protesters coming in. So that was kind of an indication that they, the students who were some of the protesters, were worried that those from outside might be trying to come in. I just have a question on the security situation on campus and at the library prior to this event. Is the library accessible to anyone or do you have to be let in by a student or a faculty member? Um, the library is open to the public. Okay. And or was. <laughs> it, it won't be open to the public again for some time. We'd allow some other Will you be giving tours of the like. library to the media? Excuse me, Chief. We, we uh, are planning that tomorrow. You are. I just had a question for the Chief. Can I'm you explain the tactics why you went in this morning versus prior days and also what um, the officers might have encountered when they went into the library? Were most of the demonstrators on the bottom floor or? Yeah, so the decision to make, uh, when to make entry is just always based upon resources, you know, time, people, um, paramount to all of the missions of policing is around life safety. And that life safety is for everyone involved, not just for, you know, the community or police officers, I mean, demonstrators, it doesn't matter what the title is, we want life safety for everyone. So, um, as we said before, we're working closely with President Cudd, and also working closely with Portland State University Police, and we started out, Chief Halliburton was here a minute ago. I want to give him credit and, and um, appreciate his, his leadership in this as well. But we wanted to make sure, when this turned from a public order event to a criminal event, which is really when they breached the library, um, that we were working closely with the DA and others to make sure we had the right charges, right understanding of legal authority, and then the right tactics. As stated earlier by Sergeant Allen, as we processed the building, you know, it just turned out that most of the people were on one particular floor. And my understanding is there was some interaction, and then that's when they, you know, fled. So um, what we encountered as we were clearing the building were, you know, several barricaded doors that we had to break through, and then once we got to the bottom floor and made contact with folks, that's when they ran out. President, could I have a follow-up for you, Tom Schultz, KGW? I was wondering, what specific buildings were you worried about that were threatened to be taken over, and what were those conversations like between you, your staff, and maybe law enforcement to ensure that didn't happen? Yeah, so we were worried about um, the, the buildings specifically on the park blocks, um, and we do have different forms of access control, so we, we raised that level of access control um, on the park blocks. Meaning that? So, it could be, so we have, you know, swipe cards, right, ID cards that swipe us in. Um, and we can, uh, maybe I shouldn't be talking about security, <laughs> but we can, you know, adjust the level of uh, who can enter what buildings, right? So. That's Last question down here in the corner, we gotta get these folks out of here. I was just wondering, I think it's a question for DA Schmidt, what will the investigation look, look like going forward where, how you might tie property damage or anything within the library to individuals, you know, what's that going to look like? Is it going to take a typical amount of time? Is it going to be an elongated process? Yeah, it's, it's too early to say. I mean, it depends, right? Uh, we'll be looking at all kinds of, um, you know, evidence that we can gather with cooperation with the police, but things like video, photographic evidence, witness evidence, all of that will be taken into consideration and where we can tie specific individuals to specific property damage and we'll be charged for that. Are students be charged Thank differently you, than it. others? Is Thank it you. possible to just get an update on the public order As team? we have been very communicative over today, the prior days, please email us. We messaging out more later. Who knows what later will bring also. So thank you for joining us. Appreciate it.